So, this was my first time ever using a pen display. And holy sh... Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and today we're gonna to be checking out the new Artist Pro 16TP from XP Pen. And for me, the prospect of trying out a pen display at a time when I'm really into making photo art, not gonna lie, it was really exciting. And whilst I've used a couple of graphics tablets before, namely the ones with plastic surface tracking, this is the first time I've ever used one with a built-in display. Or it is a display, and I've only ever used tablets from Wacom, so it was a nice change of pace to try out a different brand. So first off, I'd like to say thank you to XP Pen for sending me this unit to review and then keep forever. Yay! But as always, anything I review, my opinions will always be honest because, well, morally, that's the right thing to do. But also, it helps you decide if this is a product that is going to be a good fit for you. So, let's take a look at what's included in the box. So both the outer and inner boxes are beautifully decorated with some awesome artwork. Open those up and you'll be greeted with the pen display front and center. There's a protective case to safely store the pen or stylus that also includes nine spare nibs and a tool for changing the nib. There's a power adapter that's for the US by default and there's three power converters included for different regions, whether you're in the UK, EU or Australia. You get two USB-C cables, one that connects to the power adapter and one that connects to your computer. But if you don't have a USB-C port on your computer, fear not because there is a USB-A to HDMI cable included in the box. Also included is an artist's glove. This typically covers the two fingers that will be resting on the display and a cleaning cloth so you can clean the display. Lastly, you also get a quick start guide, warranty card and a holiday greetings card. So let's get this all nicely arranged on the desk. Right, so there we go, we've got that. Got the pen case and the pen that I need to stay still. Pen's gonna keep rolling now. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. Pen, stay still. I will not take orders from a ginger. Okay, I got the pen still. Oh, all right, here we go. Got it out, let's give this a little clean. There we go. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I can see my reflection. And it's probably worth mentioning that most of the things in the box did come with some protective plastic wrapping, but let's be honest, that came off the day all this arrived. There was no messing around here. Mm -mm -mm. So there we go, we've had a look at everything that comes in the box. Now it's time to scrutinize the design. The fun part. The 15.6 inch display is nice and big with some chunky black bezels on all four sides. The overall design is clean and minimal, yes, 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 and the back of the device has a space grey style colour with a few curves here and there, particularly around the edges, making it easy to pick up from a flat surface. The back is made of plastic and it doesn't feel cheap, very strong and sturdy with a texture that very closely mimics the one found on the metal pen case. And that consistency in the finish, even between different materials, is a nice touch. There's four rubber feet on the bottom so that nothing gets scratched or starts sliding around your desk. And the front facing logo is an acceptable size, not too big and in your face, which is nice. And it also helps that XP Pen's logo is quite clean and simple. There's nothing worse than a great product and a logo just yeah! the pen comes in a protective metal case complete with the most satisfying open and close sound ever allow me to demonstrate Ooh. oh oh i love that sound i could do that all day simply push in and the tray slides out revealing the pens and spare nibs the USB-C cables are black and are of the 90 degree variety, and my only wish is that the power cable was a tad longer. Like it's not really an issue, but it just takes a bit more consideration with cable management and what wires need to go where on my desk. My cable management, it's always a nightmare. So as far as the design goes, I think it looks stunning. Next, let's geek out over some specs. So the device is 406.4 millimeters wide, 263.1 millimeters tall, and 15.4 millimeters deep. That's some very specific measurements right there. It's got a crispy 4K resolution, which is 3840 by 2160, and this is a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. Color accuracy is 92% Adobe RGB, 124% sRGB, and 88% NTSC. And the display has a decent level of brightness when cranked all the way up to its maximum. The display has multi-touch support for using gestures to zoom in, out, and rotate, but this is only on Windows at the moment, and we'll come back to that in a bit. 
The PH2 stylus is made out of plastic and supports 8192 levels of pressure. It has a digital eraser on the top together with a programmable secondary button and it supports a 60 degree angle when tilting. It's also battery free so no need to worry about charging. Oh chick come. You're gonna stay there now. Stay. Stay. The glass display is fully laminated and is anti-glare and as mentioned already it's powered by a USB-C cable and then connects to your computer via either USB-C or via the USB-A HDMI combo cable. And there's also a Kensington lock just in case anyone tries to spontaneously run off with your device. And the device supports both Windows set a bed or hubble. And the device supports Windows 7, 8 and 10 and Mac OS 10.10 and up. Now you may have noticed the absence of any buttons on the front of the tablet and personally I love that. Like even on my previous tablets I would never use them, sometimes just disable them entirely because I like to keep this hand free to operate the old keyboard shortcuts rather than pressing buttons. I do think that yes maybe they could have included a few minimal buttons just for the people who would use them but yeah personally I love the way it is, nice and symmetrical too which is always a plus in my book. So yeah whether you like having those buttons on the side or you don't mind them completely gone that's going to be a personal choice depending on how you like to work. And because I purchased an XP pen stand separately, you can see it here, that raises the display up about 15 degrees, my keyboard can nicely slide into the space underneath when I'm using an external monitor. And this just helps save a bit of space on my desk. Or if you're using a laptop, you can use the built-in keyboard on that and then you've got two displays to work with. So uh, two is always better than one, right? It's also worth mentioning that we're not completely buttonless. We do have five along the top left edge. One of the top buttons brings up a menu with settings for the display. Alongside we have two buttons to increase or decrease the brightness of the display and the power button is on the left side at the top. And just below that there's a button that enables you to cycle between three different modes. First there's the balance priority mode that enables you to operate the display by touch and also by using the pen with equal priority given to both. Press the button again and it changes to the pen priority mode. This is my personal favourite and as the name suggests gives the pen priority. So I can still use my fingers to operate the display by touch to let's say select tools or use gestures but the stylus takes priority. So it's less likely that my hand will activate the display by mistake whilst I'm resting on the display using the pen. The last option turns off touch support entirely and this is useful if you prefer to only use the pen. The palm rejection isn't flawless so my documents did pan around unexpectedly sometimes, even in pen priority mode, but this was infrequent enough that it wasn't really an issue. And as I mentioned earlier, after testing the device on both Windows and Mac OS, Mac OS at the moment doesn't support gestures. I'm not sure why that is, but hopefully support for the multi-touch features will find their way to Mac OS somewhere down the line. Come on XP Pen, you know you want to. Like for me personally, it's not really an issue. As I say, I use my left hand to operate the keyboard shortcuts to navigate around my document, but I thought it was something worth mentioning. Also, if you're using Windows, just remember to enable gestures from the preference panel in Photoshop and then restart the app to fully enable this functionality. And before you get started, you'll also need to download the latest drivers for either Windows or Mac OS from the XP Pen site. And once installed, you can open up the app and change settings like pressure sensitivity, customize a secondary button and a few other things. Speaking of the secondary button, this label kept popping up whenever I pressed it. Not sure why, but fortunately it's a setting that can be disabled from the top right corner of the app. Or you can customize the secondary button to be anything you like and even give the functionality a custom name. So those are the settings and in the absence of any buttons on the side that's literally it. It's that simple. So next we're going to take a look at the performance and I'm going to connect this to a laptop and then hop into Photoshop. First off I have to say that even when working very close to the display, the 4K resolution and the display's pixel density make it virtually impossible for my eyes to discern individual pixels. Now if the display were larger that would reduce the pixel density but I think this 15.6 inch size that's definitely the sweet spot. Next let's just grab the brush tool and draw a few lines. Tracking looks good and the ability to draw directly on the screen feels so much more natural than any other graphics tablets that I've used before. I can also open up the brush settings panel and set various properties to use pen pressure. This will bring those 8000 plus levels of pressure into play for the respective property. Fortunately there's no noticeable parallax as far as I can see. Parallax is when there's a lag or delay between where the pen is and where the stroke on the screen is. But so far, pen and cursor? 
spot on. And this makes working in Photoshop both considerably easier and more fun too, because I can control the level of pressure when I'm drawing, but also adjust the angle to get different styles of stroke. Here you can see me using the pen to add some highlights to a character. We've got the brush settings panel over here, which is extensively customizable, and it makes it so much easier to use the brush tool to add a foggy atmosphere to a scene. And yes, whilst these techniques can be done using a mouse or trackpad, it's just so much more enjoyable and feels so much more natural using the pen directly on the screen. So it looks great, performs great, but how much does it actually cost? A lot of money, that's what. Well, at the time of recording, it's available on XP Pen's UK store for 76499, or 79999 on the US store. And that ain't no small chunk of change. However, if you would like to check out the latest prices for yourself, well, I'll put some links in the video description. Now, for me personally, there's two factors that would determine if I would buy this if I hadn't been sent one already. The design of the product would have to be stunning and it would have to have a half decent logo and it would need to be suited to the type of work I do, i.e. lots of Photoshop. And in this case, both of those boxes, they're well and truly ticked. So there we go, that wraps up the video. A very well designed and beautiful product and drawing on the screen ah, just feels so much more natural. Like seriously, you go back to using a mouse for drawing hundreds of strands of hair? Nope, ain't gonna happen. But anyway, thanks again to XP Pen and to you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, you can drop them down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.